stolen. A game made 30 years ago on a notepad and an abacus. Oh, what? Oh, I'm sorry, YouTube. I've just been informed that Stolen was actually released in the year 2005 by a British team called Blue52. Though I first thought they were just called Blue due to their extremely unclear logo. I mean, come on, has the company ever heard of outlining to make sure something stands out on a dark background before? Anyway, as the incredibly short blurb on the back of the game states, Stolen is about a young girl called Anya, who is apparently one of the greatest thieves alive. Her next mission is to steal the most valuable gem from the bleh I don't care, let's just start the game. First of all, it's not a good sign if the start game menu doesn't sit right in the boundaries given. The game introduces itself with a blurry cutscene, starting with a gratuitous cleavage shot, then dumps you into a montage of characters and action like a TV series. Shots of the main character shooting people and holding a gun is very misleading due to the main character's moral code, which inhibits her from killing anyone. The graphics of the game are actually not bad for the year of release. They're not great, but certainly a lot of work has been put into making it look acceptable. There are some obvious problems with clipping and cutscenes and during play, but this can easily be pushed aside. This would be absolutely fine if it actually punished you for being spotted. I constantly alerted the guards and security system to be told there would be backup sent to help deal with me. Maybe I should have been playing the guards since they were so stealthy I never saw this so-called backup. Even if backup was sent, each room is so small and quick to clear that there is no risk. It is quicker to just say fuck it and run through each room not giving a fuck. When I say run, I managed to turn walk on and couldn't for the life of me figure out how to turn it back. The game has a couple of mini-games, which are lockpicking and hacking. Lockpicking is essentially a pick-a-part which fits into this part game. When you have completed the near impossible task of finding the right tool to open the door, which is only about 8 different shapes, you must press up and keep it at a certain level for a couple of seconds, then repeat a couple more times to unlock the door. There's nothing wrong with this mini-game, it's interactive, simple, and just how you'd like it to play. The second mini-game for hacking is basically Simon Says, but on one side of a Rubik's Cube. Follow the pattern with your movement keys and a set time limit. Rinse and repeat a couple of more times, and you have successfully hacked a computer. Again, I found nothing wrong with these mini-games at all. And through this, we arrive at the biggest problem yet. The controls. For starters, there is a control menu, which is great. However, what is not great is not having the ability to change key bindings or being able to see what the key bindings are. Sure, the game tells you this when you get to a spot where you need to use a certain button, but I always like to have a quick look before I start playing so I'm not looking for a certain button in a pressured situation. The only options the control menu give you are camera controls, since when has control menu ever stood for camera controls? It is a good thing that this game has camera controls as everything is inverted as standard. Now this is just a personal preference of mine, but I absolutely hate inverted cameras, which makes it all the more of a shit in my face that in first person mode the X axis is always inverted. I mean why give us the option to change the other camera options if you're going to confuse the shit out of us, making a portion of the game unchangeable. Too many times I found myself looking at the floor when I wanted to look up in a section I had to use the first person mode. Secondly, the randomness of the button assignment baffles my brain into waffles. Let me go through the fantastic assignment which makes no sense at all. WASD is movement, nothing abnormal here. E is use, Q is first person mode, but only Q gets rid of it once it's open. Again, not too complicated. Escape opens the menu, slash map, but also goes back and can close a previous screen. Pressing one of the numbers along the top opens an inventory screen, where your weapons are. Press the number which correlates to the weapon you wish to use, then you have to press enter to select the weapon. If you wish to leave the screen, you must press escape to open the options, press it again to get back to the game. Once you have selected your weapons, which can only be used in first person mode, you can press E to fire. E! Not mouse click, fucking E! Some weapons have a secondary use after you fire them, which is used by pressing G. If you get stuck in a hacking or lockpicking game, only backspace will exit it, not the escape key. 
that'll just pause the game. Backspace. Shift lets you run up a wall, space makes Anya roll, or if you're standing still or next to something you can jump onto, from, off or up, will make you jump. Control will make you crouch. Control will also make you pull a 180 in a crawl space, which would have been very nice to know as there was no way to turn around otherwise, causing me to crawl back and forth through the same duct three times so I could actually get to the room I was looking for. Left bracket and right bracket apparently navigates the menu, but it is just easier to use the mouse. And finally, one of the keyboard buttons causes Anya to walk around like a sloth. I'm still not sure which one, so I just played the game pretending I was too cool to run. Overall, I have to give this game a sneaky 2 CGI cleavages out of 10, mainly due to the fact that the story was not compelling in the slightest, and the controls make me want to break my keyboard into pieces. This is my last resort.